retired Navy SEAL who became famous nearly 10 years ago after coming out as transgender announced that he is detransitioning after um, and called on Americans to, quote, wake up about how transgender health services are hurting children. Joining me now to discuss is a transgender individual herself, Sarah Higdon, who's joining us now uh, on camera. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Austin. Thanks for having me. Sure. So would you like to set up this story for our audience? Yeah. So if you, if the audience doesn't know, so Chris Beck um, will form, I don't, I don't know what, I, I just call Chris chief. That's what most people just call him. Um, and was going by Kristen Beck for a long time. I think transitioned to Kristen Beck in like the early, like 2013, 2012 timeframe. Um, and yeah, former Navy SEAL um, has testified in front of Congress, um, was actually like very popular around that time. I remember first seeing Chris and almost being like, I saw Chris as an inspiration um, because it was, I, again, it was kind of like you see yourself and you see somebody else stepping out of the mold and doing something. Um, I wouldn't say that Chris's transition had anything to do with my transition because I think I don't want people to think that like, and I don't ever want Chris to think that that helped me transition, but Chris was always a great person. I still, and and I still admire him for what he's doing now. You know, it takes a lot of guts because for the last four or five years, Chris has kind of been out of the limelight until he did a Ro Rogan interview about two months ago, kind of been out of the limelight and just living, living life, um, helping veterans. And so now we've talked about it behind the scenes and there's just a need for people to come out there and speak about, what's happening. And if Chris is saying that he felt pressured into this because he was getting CNN interviews, he was getting all this media attention. If he felt pressured into this, then just think about what happens to children when they're getting pressured into this. If you're just tuning in to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson, I'm speaking to transgender veteran, Catholic and liberty activist, Sarah Higdon right now on the line. I'm also got liberty. Yeah, got liberty. Nice shirt there, Sarah. Uh, we're also joined in studio by my friend Edie Vogel. She is a Catholic conservative, and she's a, an activist herself, and she's active in local politics as well as a former uh, town councilwoman here from Jefferson City, Missouri. We're talking about a uh, former Navy SEAL, a veteran, who uh, uh, by the name of Chris. What's what's Chris's last name? I'm sorry, Sarah. Beck. Chris, Chris Beck. Beck. Chris Beck, who had transitioned to female uh, and now is detransing, announced they're detransitioning. Uh, back to mail. Uh, what was, I think, interesting in this story was that Chris had talked about all of the pressure that was put on him to transition in the first place. Can you talk about that, Sarah? So, yeah, I know he had done a lot. Of, like I said, he testified in front of Congress. He had CNN interviews. C I, he said he had a lot of people had been kind of pushing him towards this. Um, he got a book deal. So um, the book is Lady Valor. He had a documentary made about him uh, which i think was lady valor as well and so very popular like the first person really popular person to come out as trans and the fact that he was this big brawny navy seal made it even bigger of a story this big masculine dude coming out as trans was was huge um and then i know chris had some activism and i disagreed with some of his activism because um he disagreed completely with like the trump trans ban and everything like that and um there was a lot of very much activists and very and, and so some points in times i've always seen chris as being more on the left of things and it seems like over the years he's become very much a libertarian mindset kind of being red-pilled because now he's seeing what's being t what's been taking place behind the scenes um and i do know that chris stopped taking test or stopped taking estrogen about seven years ago and i said that it said that in the story as well um, and I know because he was having health complications because of it. And so it, it wasn't working for him. So he still tra was tra trans, but was not taking testosterone because, or estrogen because it, wasn't, it, it was not good for his body. We're talking to Sarah Higdon. She's a transgender Catholic military veteran herself. Um, and we're talking about uh, Navy SEAL, who's now announced that she felt pressured that to transgender. I guess... I, it's it's Sarah. It's hard for me to get the pronouns right sometimes on this one because when someone announces that they are detransitioning, then do we refer to them by their yeah. masculine pronouns, right? So I mean, so it's Chris. Yeah, now. yeah. And so I I, I think I, that's why I said I've I've not talked to Chris lately. I know I've, I I'm having a hard time as well, even just having this conversation because 
Don't know I've, how never really known him. I've only known I've only known him as Kristen right. and, and 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 as she and and so like I said it's this kind of caught me for a loop because like I said I didn't see this coming um because Chris he's always been this big advocate like I said we've had conversations behind the scenes um just a couple of times um he said he's told me before that he's a fan of my work so it's it's really interesting and I'm, I'm glad somebody like Chris is speaking out because somebody who had that much influence early on in the, the, the shift to this trans movement is able to come back and say, wait a second, this is what's really going on. This is what happened to me. And you guys saw it all happen. This is the first person that you've seen it happen in front of your eyes that they came out, they transitioned, like literally went from one day and the Rogan interview is great. It went, went from one day working at the Pentagon, you know, as Chris. And then the, just the next day walking in and addressing heels, wearing a wig and as Kristen. And it was like, but even the story, I didn't even know, like the story said, that even with the VA doctor, the VA doctors, after like a 30 minute interview, were like, yeah, you're probably trans. Here's the hormones, you know, type thing, which I agree with informed consent for adults, but you have to be informed, not like this might, you know, there's, sh- as a person, you should still be going and getting the mental evaluations and stuff like that, the personal responsibility of that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I can't believe the VA did it back in 2013 before it was even you can, allowed in the you military. You can't believe that. I wasn't even in the military, and I can totally believe that the VA could do that. If you're just tuning in to the Wake Up America show with Austin <laughs> Peterson, I'm speaking to Sarah Higdon, and in studio we're also joined by Edie Vogel. This is a fascinating conversation about a transgender Navy SEAL who's now detransitioning and talking about how they were pressured to transition in the first place. Sarah, uh, you know, as someone, you recently transitioned yourself. Um, so, you know, yeah, made the actual made the actual surgical transition. Um, so, I, I, but I'd like to talk about detransitioning because I imagine you probably mm-hmm. did a little bit of research on that. What is the process now that Chris essentially is going to have to undergo in order to detransition? <sighs> well, like I said earlier, for Chris, it's not probably going to be a lot because, like I said, Chris hasn't been on estrogen for seven years i don't think he went through with full surgery or anything like that so it's really just kind of changing the changing his name back and then switching back into you know living however he wants i i assume he's still going to live pretty similar life to what he's living right now but so i then, know so this, then, this could so if that's the case this, then this could, uh, it's not it's not oh, as yeah. di- it would not be as difficult as someone like for yourself who has made a much more permanent sort of a change no, if I was to go and do transition, I would actually have to be on testosterone supplements for the rest of my life um, because my body doesn't naturally produce testosterone anymore. Where Chris's would, if you ha- if you haven't had if you've had the surgery, then you know it's the same with a young female that's had a hysterectomy. Their body's not going to produce estrogen anymore uh, the same way. So it's you would have they would have to take estrogen supplements for the rest of their lives if they detransition. Wow! Wow! That's. Um... Well, it's quite chilling, you know, to hear something like that. It must, it must, and you knew that full well going into your transition, Sarah. I mean, it, it must yeah. have been quite frightening because, I mean, in essence, what you've done, you know, is permanent, right? Absolutely. And, and that's the other, it's absolutely permanent. I mean, because that's one thing that's becoming an issue is, you know, we're getting these kids so young, transitioning them so young that their bodies are already permanently altered. So it's like they, Big Pharma gets money up front and then they get money for the rest of their lives after they've even realized after they've made these, you know, the, this mistake and it shouldn't have happened, but they're going to, now they're paying money to detransition. They're probably going to be on Big Pharma, you know, patient for the rest of their lives. And I do want to mention with Chris though, too, you got to remember again, coming out in like 2012, 2013, it wasn't this big thing. And so, um, there wasn't as much information about this as there is now. You know, we live in, a, in an age where you can Google what happens with transition. I mean, I, even Chris would almost be like an experiment. Like their transition was very much experimental at the time because it wasn't until about 2016 that it really spiked. And so now for, like I said, for him to be coming out, um, I, I don't blame him at all for, you know, what he's doing. I'm actually, like I said, I'm proud that he's out here speaking with us, like all the detransitioners that we see like Chloe Cole and stuff like that, that are speaking out as well. And I'm, I'm, you know, we have a lot of those on our team, like over at trans against groomers, we and gays against groomers. 
they're all on our team. I mean, we have detransitioners that are working, you know, specifically with us. And because the, the issue is that the problem with a lot of the trans community on the left is once you've detransitioned, they just, they, they write you off and they push you away as to where they still need medical care just the same way as everybody else. And, you know, just because they've detransitioned doesn't mean that their dysphoria stops or anything like that. So we still have to take care of these you know, detransitioners and we still have to listen to them because they tell a story. They tell the other side of the story that the left wants nobody's to suppress hearing. them for sure. Um, Sarah, yeah. this is, this is probably a really difficult question here, but one of our listeners did send it in and asked, does Sarah have any regrets? No, I, I mean, I don't have any regrets at this point in time. Absolutely not. And that's not even a question. Um, yeah, I am fully happy with my transition at this point in time. Um, it scares me to see some people come out seven, eight years later, though. I don't think I was manipulated into anything, but it's like seven, year, eight years down the road, could I possibly feel differently? At this point in time, I don't think so. I think I, I but it's a possibility, um, but I, I, I don't think so. That's scary. Um, Sarah, you know, you're very brave to come out here and, and talk like that about your personal experiences and say, we appreciate you very much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate you as well. Oh, thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners before we let you go? Um, right now, uh, just watch. I got some news coming up in the next couple of days. Got some events coming up in uh, Wisconsin in January, um, events in um, Pennsylvania in March, and I got some just speaking events for the next year. And just follow me. Uh, go to my website, sarahigdon.com. You can go to my Twitter and Instagram, which are both Sarah Higdon underscore. Um, and you can find my, all my stuff there and just watch for some of the events that I'm doing um, around the country. We'll do that. Sarah Higdon, Catholic, transgender, military, uh, former military and friend of the show. Sarah, thank you for your time today. We appreciate your courage.